without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, one of my favorite speakers and trainers from stage. He was also an entertainer uh, and been in uh, several several different skits, uh, excuse me, movies, excuse me. Uh, was a, bar a bartender, saw he seeing, made a lot of sense working in his schedule because he was busy like most people are when they plate full. And he's, he's made it to all the trips that ACN had to offer in the circle of uh, champions and also in the advisory board. Can we give a warm welcome to the month of October on the road to international, the one and only Mr. Dean Tarali. How are we doing this again? Man. Hey, Mr. T, I appreciate the opportunity to be with all of you guys. Um, you know, I'll start where I always start. And that is just a thank you to you. And I want to make sure that people recognize uh, what it is that you're doing to help all these folks. And, uh, um, you know, there's a reason why I always bring this up is because it's not normal uh, because people have enough going on in their lives. And it's something I'm actually going to talk about today. Uh, people have enough going on in their lives. Uh, they're busy. They're uh, that's the word we hear all the time. And I know you are as well. Uh, but but you guys, here's the thing, right? Um, it takes, they say it takes 21 days to create a habit. 21 days. Now, I don't know that that's true or not true, but that's what quote unquote they say. I have found it to be true for me that if I do something consistently, it becomes a habit. And, and not only has Mr. Thomas made this call a habit, but he's made it part of his mission to help as many people as he can. Now, do they get helped? That's up to them. But he's doing what he is called to do to create an environment where people can win and they can win in this business part-time. And I think that's really awesome. So Mr. T, it's good to see you. I'm looking forward to seeing you next week. Uh, hopefully have, uh, you know, uh, be able to spend a few minutes together, have a high five, a hug and a beverage. Uh, we'll leave it at that and uh, see if we can make that happen. So, so you guys, yeah, I have a, I have a few things on my mind. So, you know, in getting ready to, to do this call with all of you, um, man, we've covered so much ground. Like I've covered a lot with you guys and then shoot, you throw in the other four days of the week. I know you're getting a ton of information. So I'm thinking to myself, well, what are the things that we've covered? Well, we've covered the company. We've covered the comp plan. We've covered, uh, mindset gets covered in every topic from every leader, right? We've covered, you know, daily activities. We've covered uh, reasons why you would do this. Uh, we covered um, breaking a routine, I've covered that a bunch of times in different ways. So, so we have to shake things up. And then I started to realize, and this actually happened on a call that I did with some of my uh, leaders yesterday. By the way, you guys, I'm going to be having coffee with you for the better part of this call. So just be prepared. So yesterday I, I have, um, I, do, I do a leadership call on Wednesdays. It's not typically very long. It's about 30 minutes or so. And what I let everybody know is when I start my day, right, um, uh, first thing I do after I kind of get myself cleaned up is um, I will uh, I will jump into about, not very long, about five minutes or so of some scripture stuff. Just that's my faith, right? So try to start my day that way. Um, and then I will, um, I will go into my emails and I will, you know, I, truthfully, I will surf a little bit, but what I'm, what I'm surfing, it, there's, there's, there's different articles that I have, there's different, uh, um, uh, electronic, uh, publications that I have emailed to me, just certain things. Um, one of them, if you want to know what it is, which I love, right. Uh, because the news that we hear you guys, is the news mostly positive or mostly negative? Don't have to answer the question. I know we all know the answer. It's yeah, cause you, right, because you got it. It's mostly negative, right? Well, why is that? Who knows? C try to create fear, all this other stuff. So I found a website, and some of you may know this, um, and I'll just share this with you. 
It's called nice news. Has anybody heard of nice news? Well, good. Well, good for you. So now guess what? I, and, and they have great stories, like great freaking stories. And it's just, it's, it, it just kind of starts your day a little better. Like we've got some tragic things going on in the Middle East right now. We have this crazy election coming up that, that I'm going to talk about in a minute. Not, not, it's not, it's not a partisan conversation. It's where we are as a, as, as a country and where we are as an organization and what we can do. Right. But I, I get up and I read this thing called nice news and, and it's, and you guys, I'm telling you, it's just a different way to look at the world. So I'm thinking to myself, as I'm preparing for this month for you guys, I'm like, what is it that, 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 that we are either doing or not doing? And, and I have to look to myself, what am I communicating or not communicating to you that will help get your business in the direction you want it to go. So I had to challenge myself. So if you want to take one note, I'm going to give you a few notes to take. If you want to take one note is you can write this down. Am I challenging myself? You, and, and you got to ask yourself that question. Because if you're getting the same results from the same things that you've been doing, God, you got to change it up. Right? So one of the things I want to offer to you guys is this thing is this website called Nice News. And I think it's freaking great. And I love it. I look forward to it every morning. Okay, cool. So yesterday on our my my it was an RD call, and I've kind of opened it up to RCs and some specific uh, ETLs that are really working, right? I shared with them an article that I found. And I'm going to read you guys eight points. And here's what I want you to understand. I have to believe, and Mr. Thomas, correct me, and if you want me to go in a different direction, I'm happy to do it because this is your call. But I honestly believe people understand the huge favor approach to get a customer. I mean, I have to believe after all this time together, people understand how to ask for a huge favor in terms of getting a customer. I have to believe that people understand how to pique someone's interest. Good gosh, if I have to train someone on, do you look at other ways of making money? So watch this, pay someone a compliment. Do, do you keep your business options open? Do you look at other ways of making money? How many times could that be done in a day? I know you know how to pique someone's interest. I'm gonna tell you another one that I know you know. I know that you know how to put that potential guest on a three-way text with your leader. I know you know how to do that. And you want to know why I know I know you know how to do that? Because not only have I trained it, but I've been on calls that Roxanne has done and she's trained it. And we're going to talk about the national in a second. But, but so I know you guys understand the basics. So let's talk about something else. And here's what it is. And this all goes to circling back to your ACN business. I talked to my team yesterday, the leaders, and it's about eight skills that can help boost your mood and reduce anxiety. And I'm thinking to myself, why don't people talk to more people? And I realize one of the things that I haven't really covered with you guys is what mode are you in when you're out in the world? What mode are you in? Are you that person that is attractive to people? And I don't mean physically attractive, even though this is probably the best looking call in history. Um, um, what, what condition are you in when you talk to someone, right? When you're out in the world, when you're in the marketplace, okay? So now check this out. Let me give you a very simple analogy before I go through these eight points. Let me make it super simple. We all want to build our business. Some of us want to build the business more than others. Some are more committed than others. Some will take more action than others. But I can't believe you guys would be on this call if you didn't want to build your business. So that being said, we have to understand the relationship for a quick second between hunting and fishing. So people maybe go hunting and fishing. Where did this come from? Let me just tell you the way I look at it is this. When you're out 
in your life and you're trying to find people, right? You're on a hunt. And when you're on a hunt, looking for people, right? Trying to engage people. When you're on a hunt, you have a different mentality, right? And, and it's kind of like a conquering mentality. So understand that you guys now look, I'm not a hunter and I'm not a fisher. I have friends that do it, but here's what I know. When you understand the relationship between hunting and fishing and you're out in the world and you're going out to build your business, you're going to go out to talk to people like Al, like we, I've been saying for a long time, what are you going to do to push your business forward? And that means you getting out and going and finding people to talk to. There's a challenge with that. Because now you're a hunter. And who understands that when an animal knows it's being hunted, an animal runs for its freaking life to get away from you. Now, what happens when you go fishing? You're out on a boat. You bait the hook. I think that's what they call it, right? I'm not a fisher, but you bait the hook and you, 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 you cast the line. And you and you chill out in the boat and you got a beer or a whatever. And you're you you right and you kind of cast again. Now what you're doing is you're putting something attractive in the water and having people come to you, but that doesn't work if you're not in the boat in the water. So that's you getting out there. That's you getting out there, right? That's you being out in the world. But then once you're out in the world, what do you do? Well, here's one of the reasons why. You guys, please follow this. I, I, I hope you get the message today. When people go out in the world to want to try to build their business and make contacts and build relationships and create rapport with people, one of the reasons why some of that doesn't happen, right, is because they get into hunting mode and it starts to be uncomfortable. And you don't think, Sarah, and you don't want to do what's uncomfortable. So I realized that so much of this has to do with your mood and anxiety over what we're doing. So I found an article and it says, these eight skills can help boost mood and reduce anxiety. Who would like to know what those are? Okay, cool. Who's not raising their hand? I'm just kidding. Here goes. So bear with me, you guys, because I'm gonna give you exactly what I got out of this. So I hope that you find this helpful. So there's eight of them. Here goes. Number one, positive events. Positive events. We tend to fixate on the negative. So try this. Focus on something good today. It could be a beautiful sky. It could be a delicious bite of fresh fruit. It could be a call from a friend. The author, who is a coffee lover like me, suggests taking time to really enjoy that morning ritual. Uh, noticing the aroma, the, the feel of the warm mug. And when you pay attention to small pleasures, you may feel a shift to a sense of calm or comfort. This is a simple concept, but it goes against our natural instincts. Humans evolved to pay attention to threats and problems. That's adaptive, but don't miss out on the good. How crazy is what she said? Humans evolved to pay attention to threats and problems. She didn't show up for the meeting. He didn't do this. This person didn't get qualified. This person won't return my call, right? But don't miss out on the good along the way. So the first one is positive events. Here's number two, savoring. Now that you've noticed the beautiful sky or the delicious scent, take time to savor it. The goal here is to take a moment and make that moment last. You've got great photos from a vacation, a celebration. Each time you look at them, you can re-experience positive feelings. You guys, taking a snapshot of this call, reminding you of this call, taking a snapshot or pictures from the national, from the people that you're around. Think of it as another hit of positive emotion. You can savor a moment by simply remembering it, or you can write it down, or you can tell someone else about it. This can amplify positive feelings and give you an emotional buffer when st stress and anxiety arise. Look, I'm not going to go into details, but I just had a conversation with Red, who happens to be on this call. We talked about how crazy is look, God's crazy. I mean, he, he's, he or she or however you believe it. He's amazing. I had this same conversation with Red before I found this article two weeks ago. 
right? So the second one, you guys, is savoring. Here comes the third one. So good. Gratitude. Number three is gratitude. This one can feel like a platitude. I get it. But before you brush it aside, there's a lot of research on the benefits. For instance, a recent study among women points to a potential longevity boost from feelings of gratefulness. So ask yourself this. Here goes. If I had a list of all the things that I'm grateful for, would it be long? Think of all the people, the events, the experiences that bring you joy. At first, you may only think of a few obvious ones, but with practice, your list can grow longer and you'll notice the small things that enrich your life. So to me, you guys, look, I said this at the beginning of every single call I've done for Al for the last five freaking years. I'm grateful, and I know you are all, all are grateful for him putting this uh, uh, um, platform together. For you guys to come together on a daily basis and get things started the right way. Number four, number four, daily mindfulness. Now, you've likely heard this one before. To feel calmer, tune into your experience, be in the present moment instead of getting caught up in your thoughts. But, so good, you won't see the benefit unless you actually take time to practice it. One way is to focus on your breath. It's a shortcut to get rid of clutter in your mind. By the way, who besides me ever has clutter in your mind? Okay, watch this. Watch this. It's a shortcut to get rid of the clutter in your mind. To try it, find a quiet spot, take some slow breaths. As you inhale, let your belly expand. Make your exhale slow about twice as long. Notice the way your breath feels in your belly as it rises and falls. So what she's saying is make the exhale twice as long as the inhale. Just breathe it out. Okay? Number five, positive reappraisal. When something, I'm letting Josh in here. When something unfortunate or unexpected happens, can you find a silver lining? How many of us have had that? How many of us had it, it, it outside of ACN and in ACN? Absolutely. Positive reappraisal. When something unfortunate or unexpected happens, can you find a silver lining? It's a familiar concept, but one the author says can pay off. One refrain that she uses in her own life when something bad happens is it could have been much worse. It could have been much worse right? So what does that do? It just gives you a perspective. You know what, you guys? Think about this. We're all on a Zoom right now from different parts of the country, actually with Al, with different parts of the world. Like, look, you guys, we can turn, if something's not going in the direction you want, how quickly can you turn it around? So here's what she says. The next time you have an annoying experience, say you take your car in for repairs and it's not ready on time. Here you go. You guys, follow this. Please freaking follow this. This happens at ACN every damn day. The next time you have an annoying experience, say you take your car in for repairs and it's not ready on time. Instead of getting mad, you could use the time and take that walk you've been meeting to get in. Treat yourself to some quiet time. It's not possible to do this in every situation, but it's a good way to gain perspective amid everyday challenges like losing your keys or missing the bus. Number five, big one. I'm sorry, number six, number six. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Number six, number six. Big one, self-compassion. Self-compassion. Are you your biggest critic? Is your talk, is your self-talk negative? And by the way, I've had a lot of conversations with you and a bunch of you have negative self-talk. I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you right now. And, 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 and look, we all do from time to time. You just can't hang on to it. So here's what she says. Are you your biggest critic? Is your self-talk negative? Um, uh, if your self-talk is negative, that's a good clue. Many of us hold ourselves to a very high standard that we would never expect of anyone else. So now's the time to take the compassion you'd show a friend and turn it on yourself. There are easy ways to do this. Take some time uh, to do things that make you feel good. For example, take a lunch break when you're hungry instead of putting it off. You can even try to give yourself a hug every now and then. 
Man, that's a big one. Self-compassion, you guys. You're there. You go, Al. I, I freaking love that guy. <laughs> Al's so great. <laughs> number seven. Number seven. Personal strengths. And by the way, congratulations for you guys taking notes on these because you try to commit this to memory. I don't even know what people do on here. That's crazy. Number seven is personal strengths. Here goes. In the midst of challenges and struggles, we can forget what we're good at. So the core, so, so we want to offer up a technique to recognize your strengths and take stock. Are you a good listener? Are you empathetic? Are you great at managing details? Knowing your strengths helps you stand strong amid challenges. Now, before I get to number eight, I want to give you guys something that I thought about when I read this. Here goes. One of the guys I like to listen to that many of you know is uh, Gary V, Gary Vaynerchuk. And here's one of the things that he says, and I wholeheartedly believe in this. Watch this. Do I have everybody's attention, by the way? Like, really have your attention? Okay, watch this. Here's what he says. We all have strengths and we have weaknesses. What have we been taught to do? Work on our weaknesses. Let's get better at our weaknesses. And he says, absolutely freaking not. Do not do that. You focus on your strengths. You hit your strengths out of the park. You do your strengths every damn day and you work on your weaknesses along the way, but focus on your strengths. You know, we've all been given like certain gifts and things that we didn't have to work very hard at. And some of you, it might be like, this is not one of my strengths, but for some of you, it's your strength is being analytical, diving into the numbers and the gigabytes and the megawatts and all that stuff. If that's your strength, hammer it. Right. You know, for me, I'm, I'm trying to learn how to become more, uh, you know, outgoing and being a little more like, you know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's like, right. So I know what my strengths are, but you work on your weaknesses, but focus on your strengths. Right. And then here's number eight. Number eight is attainable goals. If you know your strengths, it may make it easier to set goals that align with them. The research on goal attainment shows that any progress towards a goal increases your positive emotion. Let me say that again. Please listen. The research on goal attainment shows that any progress towards a goal increases your positive emotion. At the end of every freaking call, Al says, what are you going to do to move your business what? What are you going to do to move your business forward? Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm reading this to you guys, and I'm telling you, that's what he's doing. The research on goal attainment shows that any progress towards a goal increases your positive emotion. So it's worth pulling out a notebook and writing down some goals. I find it extremely rewarding to cross something off my list. I find it very rewarding, extremely rewarding to cross something off my list. I'm going to give you an example from home. So I can show you guys right now. I got the, I got the Highland cows literally and the ducks like literally right in front of me. So my wife had um, some things for me to do like, <laughs> like home and garden stuff, like stuff. That had to be done around here. And this is not like the smallest little space. Like there's stuff to do, right? So um, I told her, I said, I said, <laughs> oh my God, Al, this could turn into a whole different thing. I told, her, I told her, I said, I said, oh my God, this is going to be so funny between the, between the males and the females on this. This is going to be so great. Okay. Hopefully it'll be great. I'm, 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 you know, hang on. I need I need to get some air in here before uh, before I go into this part. <laughs> I, I just <laughs> I just opened a window. Okay, attainable goals. Attainable goals. Here goes. Here goes. Freaking listen up, you guys. Okay, so she goes. I could use some help around here. I said no problem. I said <laughs> I said I said no problem. Just tell me what you want me to do. And she goes, I don't want to tell you what I want you to do. I want you to notice it and do it. <laughs> there goes right, right? Women, by the way, ladies on the call, 
Am I speaking to you? Should, I don't want to ask you to do it. I just want you to notice it and then do it. Don't worry, guys. I got your back. So here's what I said to her. I said, here's the thing. If I do that, I might be pulling a plant that you don't want me to pull. I might be, I might be doing something you don't want me to do. So I'm not trying to do something and then go back and then have you reprimand me on what I did when I was trying to do something without you telling me what to do. And the thing I did was not what you wanted. So just tell me what you want me to do. <laughs> guys, do I got it? <laughs> there go the guys. <laughs> the ladies are like, and I know what the ladies are thinking. I just experienced this. I know what the ladies are thinking. The ladies are thinking, oh my God, it's not that freaking hard. It's a weed. Just pull the damn weed. The guys are going, I don't know if it's an effing weed. This might be something that you planted. Why am I, <laughs> why, why am I telling you guys this? I told you I was going to be ready for you. I didn't know I was going to cover this. Let me tell you why. Um, let me tell you. <laughs> let me tell you why I think this is important. Okay. Hold on, I'm grabbing my notes. <laughs> this is crazy <clears throat> this call so funny okay so here's what it is there is a communication breakdown where the guy needs to hear it the certain way and the lady needs to communicate it the certain way so here's how we compromised when i go to her without her asking here's what i'm saying what would you like me to do to knock something off the list for the property? And when I do that, now we're in kind of like alignment, if you will, in terms of that bit of communication. So what does that mean? By the way, when that kind of communication happens, does that reduce anxiety and boost the mood? Now it's kind of like we're on the same page. I get her, she gets me, whatever. You got to do that for yourself. You got to do that for yourself. And, and I'm just telling you guys that these things, if you do them, and by the way, the information I'm giving you, I'm also giving to myself. I have to do it too, right? But I want you to know this. When you do these things that I just went over, you will be a better version of yourself. So today was not going to be about getting customers and building a team and talking about the comp plan and any of that stuff, because all that stuff is amazing. By the way, I will tell you this, the change that the company made yesterday, giving the new qualified team trainer a $100 bonus when they get their first three services and seven points, a hundred bucks to the new person, to me changes everything, changes everything. Because now you have this brand new person that you sat with for 45 minutes and you helped them get qualified with three services. Boom, they just made a hundred bucks. Hey, new business partner, you just made a hundred bucks this hour. Great job. Oh, by the way, how about the fact that they increased the, 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 the points for ID Seal? ID Seal annual is now 10 points and ID Seal monthly is four points. How quick can you guys get someone qualified? And if you didn't know that, please go into your back office or go to your emails. Maybe you guys don't think it's as big a deal as I do. I'm telling you right now, getting someone qualified with ID seal at four or 10 points is no freaking joke. You get a couple other services that they're trying for a few months and some of the services that they're going to have for a long time, they're all going to get qualified. You're going to have a bunch of people getting checks. And when they're getting checks, they're excited. And when they're excited, they talk to people. And when they talk to people, they're putting people in front of you. And the hip bones connected to the, to, I'm just kidding. But that's how it works. Some of you knew that song. Okay, cool. Um, last thing I want to share with you is, by the way, was today helpful? Was this helpful? I hope. Okay, cool. All right, good deal. Listen, you guys, no joke. Here, here we go. And I make no apologies for this. I'm telling you that I've been talking for six months about these events, right? We had Cleveland uh, into, uh, we, had, we, had, we had Cleveland into Palm Desert. Uh, Palm Desert, our, many of you were at the Palm Desert event, into Orlando. We have Orlando into Tahoe and Tahoe into the first quarter event next year. Let me tell you guys something, okay? I don't know if Al remembers this, I don't ever remember a time 
where we as a company, and by the way, I love the three events a year, but let me be crystal clear with you guys. From October to what I imagine will be the first quarter national is probably somewhere middle of February, beginning of March. Guys, that is October, November, December, January, February. That's almost half a year. So if you want my advice, and I know many of you are registered, some of you aren't, and that's fine. I'm letting you know that the leadership that we do in Tahoe, there's a whole bunch of you that are on the West Coast that that's an easy thing to get to. I'm telling you, I would get to that Tahoe event. I would get to that leadership. We had Mr. Thomas at that leadership. By the way, Mr. Thomas, don't think that I didn't have a plan in the back of my head that I'm going to do everything that I can to kidnap you to that event. I'm just, I'm letting you know right now. By the way, it, 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 it's not a kidnapping. It's not a kidnapping. It's full disclosure and everybody knows. So if you see a guy hanging around Vegas be the, the first day or two of November and he happens to be about 6'3", 215 with a, with a mask, but you see my glasses, don't worry if it's me or not. And definitely don't worry if I have a rubber mallet and some duct tape. I'm going to kidnap you to freaking Tahoe and spend a few days with, with, the, with the founders of the company, with Tony Kupas and Mike Vasudi and all of us. And we loved having you up there. Here's my point, you guys. Why do I promote this? Why do I promote it? Do you know it's more work for someone like Al to put on an event? It's more work for us to put on an event, but we also know what happens out of the events. So I'm just letting you guys know, get to that event. So here's what you have now. You have Orlando, Orlando into Tahoe, and Tahoe building into the end of the year in the, in the first quarter national. Otherwise, that's a four-month window, a five-month window between big events. That's my strongest suggestion for you guys. Al, can I put up the flyer? Okay, cool. And then I know that you guys, did you guys hear that uh, um, there's going to be this event tonight? I would absolutely be on that event. How freaking cool is it that he has a book that sold tens of thousands of copies, and now he has he's, he's got this... Uh, um, uh, I believe it's on YouTube. Am I right, Al? Tonight? Yeah, I'm sure you're going to talk. Right. He's got this YouTube event. I would absolutely be on that. Well, I will be on the event, but you guys should be on the event. Be a part of it, right? The question. So anyway, let me just do this really quickly. You guys can screenshot this and everybody should have my email. So there it is. There's the Tahoe leadership. Would love to add Al Thomas's picture to that. Well, I don't know how to say. How, how, let me see. Is that how, how subtle was I? Was I really subtle? I would love... <laughs> anyway, you guys take a screenshot of this and I'm going to leave it up here for three, two, one, and done. Okay, cool. Here you go. That being said, how are you going to people? Are you going stressed out and pressing or are you going confident and with charisma? And that's what you want. Folks, one person cannot get you to RVP or SVP, but one person can make a massive difference in your business. Who are you being when you're talking to them? So I hope those things help. Um, I really thought about this a lot, you guys. I'm like, why? What is the thing that's holding some people back? And I realized that especially with the time that we're in, look, right side of the aisle, left side of the aisle. Oh, here's what you need to know. We are coming into a window of time where people need to hear from you. We are coming into a window of time where there's going to be a lot of confusion. There is going to be a lot of insecurity. There's going to be a lot of questions. There's going to be a lot of challenges. And that is because we're coming into an election. And there's going to be a lot of that. Well, guess what you guys have? You have this company and you have a leader like Al Thomas that's allowing you to have something secure in the middle of a storm. That's having, you have something secure in the middle of what is going to be a tumultuous window of time. Economic, you guys, you saw what happened on the East Coast and down in the South? The dock workers are all on strike. You know what they're predicting? People are predicting, make sure you get to the store and you have food and canned goods. Like that, and I'm not trying to be a scare person. I'm trying to tell you, we have something for people that can give them some control back. Are you bringing that message to the masses? Thanks, Red. Thanks, Marvetta. So, so that's the question. And that's why we do these things.
So you guys, if you are not registered for Orlando, I'll be honest with you, I got to figure out why you're on this call. That's just me being direct because it is all about getting people to Orlando. What's the most important event? The next event. The next event is Orlando and we're going to build from Orlando to Tahoe, Tahoe into the new year. And obviously any of the events that, that Mr. Thomas is running, whether they're in person or virtually. Um, and by the way, let me just take one other second, Mr. T. I know I went a little long today. I really wanted to get this message out to start the month. I want to thank you personally in front of everybody um, for the event that you're doing in Central California and the time that you spent with Greg Williamson. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Um, uh, you know, A, I'm grateful. And I know that you know that. But here's what's crazy. What Mr. Thomas does is what almost all of the leaders are willing to do because here's what they're looking for. Someone who wants to do the business. I'll tell you right now, I know Greg Williamson is not in Al Thomas's downline. He's in my downline and I'm not in Al's. But I also know that all I would have to do is a phone call or a message to Al and I would hear back from him, would do anything to help. That's the environment that's being created. That's what we're building from these events. So anyway, you guys, I'm excited about this window of time. I'm excited about the fourth quarter. And um, that's what I had for you, Al, and I'll, I'll turn it back over to you.